A lot of us have this idea that tube is all about warmth, smoothness, softness, and so forth. Man, that is so 80s. Okay, maybe 70s. Technology keeps on improving, and this Cayenne CS150 that I'm going to talk about today is an example where I always thought certain things will always be better with solid state. It's no longer true. Now, I've always been curious, how would a tube integrator amp built with the second most powerful mainstream tube in the world would sound like. Now the reason I say second best is because there is the KT170 now and also I'm sure there are some other like non-mainstream tubes out there that is the size of my head that are more powerful than this KT150. Anyways, let's talk about the Cayenne CS150 today. The Cayenne CS150 tube integrator amp uses four Tungso 6SN7 tube, one RCA22DE4. Seriously man, who decided to name a tube 22DE4? Sounds like the cousin of R2D2. And four KT150 tubes, it outputs 55 watt in tri mode and 100 watt in ultra linear mode. Now for those of you who are not into tubes and are scratching your head wondering what is the big deal with 100 watt? My uh, shit Vidor can output 100 watt in class AB. You know what? I know what is what, but from my experience, 200 watt seems significantly stronger than solid state class AB 100 watt. And class AB 100 watt seems stronger than class D 100 watt. It's just the feeling I have after trying uh, over 80 plus amps. So to get 100 watts with four tubes is quite impressive. The most popular powerful like power tube right now would probably be the KT88. To get 100 watt, you need 8 of them, like the Cayenne CS100 I have here. It uses 8 KT88 tubes and it outputs only 80 watt. The Audio Research VS110 I had before had 8 6550 tubes and it outputs 100 watt. So let me remind you, CS150, only 4 tubes. So among all my audiophile friends, only Mr. Quad, well I call him that because he owns a pair of Quad, and uh, Mr. DIY because he built his own speaker have tried this amp. So this video will also be based on their experience. Now, Mr. Kanta, who now owns a pair of uh, Focus Sopra 2, will try after I finish filming this video. Now, I delayed Mr. Kanta for trying this amp. It's because it's 34 kilograms. It's painful to move it. You know, when I first started my uh, audio journey, 100 kilogram, no problem. Get a few friends over and let's move it. These days, when I ask Mr. Kanta or Mr. Vintage to try something, the first question they always ask me is, how heavy it is? More than 25 kilogram? Ah, oh, screw it, man. Yeah, I guess we're getting old and uh, that's why we like class D. Now, after this review, Mr. Kanta will try it because I told him this amp will be awesome with the Focal Sopra 2. Well, kind of, and I'll explain later. Now. Just like all Cayenne amps, the build quality is first class. And uh, in this case, the top panel comes with a six coat automotive paint. I would say the design looks yeah, just like all other Cayenne amps. In some sense, I wish it looked a bit more special because it costs over $6,000 US. And it looks not a lot different than the almost half price Cayenne CS88. And between you and me, if I'm spending six grand on an amp, I would like my audiophile friends' eyes to light up when they see it. You see the Pathos logos I have here? It's about five grand, but it looks amazing. So let me quickly summarize how it sounds. This sounds nothing like an O2 amp. The top end is very extended and it has a very lively presentation. It's uh, on the forward side of neutral. The kind where you can hear the breath of the singer, the pin dropping and so forth. Mid-range is clear, clean, neutral, and also a bit lively. Bass is kind of linear. As you know, I like V-curve, okay? In this case, if there's a bump in the mid-bass, it is very small. The bass extends very deep, has crazy dynamics, fast, and really well controlled. 
Instrument separation is very, very good. And I'll touch on all this later on. Now, it does not sound totally like a tube amp, nor a solid state amp. It's like mm, a combo of a tube preamp and a solid state power amp. Soundstage is wide, holographic and deep, but uh, you don't have that super duper airiness that I hear in other tube amps. Just enough. Okay, so as I said, I can tell you how it sounds, but what is the big deal? Nothing I said just now makes it sound impressive. Well, at least not $6,000 impressive. So let me tell you what the big deal is. But I will start with what you have to be careful with if you plan to buy this amp. First, Cayenne products, from my experience, the tubes they use are on the brighter side. This applies to the Cayenne CS55A, CS88A, CS100, even their CD player, the CD55. Now this Cayenne CS150 is really like pushing the limit of the top end brightness for me with the stock tubes. Any more, I'll throw it out. You know this Q Acoustic Concept 500 at the back here I have? So at the back of it, there is this jumper where I can adjust the treble of the speaker. Now with every other amp, I don't hear much difference when I change the settings. But with this Cayenne CS150, man, I can tell a significant difference. And I can survive like treble plus one for no more than an hour or two. I have to set the treble to zero on the speakers. Um, but I have to say though, it does sound impressive for one hour. Now, because I can't change the KT150 power tubes, well, since I think only Tung Cell makes them, I have no choice but to change the 6SN7 tubes to tame down the liveliness. Now, I borrowed some uh, Russian new stock uh, 6SN7 from Mr. Kanta, which did make it better. I also tried these CV181 tubes from uh, ChinaHiFiAudio.com, so they sent me some. And uh, interestingly, I liked it just as much as the new old stock with this uh, Cayenne CS150, if not more. By the way, if you use these CV181 tubes on the Wilsington R8 tubes, okay, tube amp, on the other hand, it will add more clarity compared to the stock tubes. So my advice, if you're going to the store to listen to a Cayenne CS150 and find it too lively, don't judge it yet. Bring your own tubes if you have to. Now, just to know, even with stock tubes, it is not sibling. And Mr. Quad and Mr. DIY tried it, and they loved it with the stock tubes. For them, the brightness was okay. All right, so what is amazing about this amp? And what does the second most powerful tube in the world brings to the table? Dynamics. Oh my gosh, when I say quote-unquote better than solid state, this is what I meant. This is probably the most dynamic amp I've ever heard at my place. The bass is punchy, deep, and articulate. It will grab onto your drivers and control it like no tomorrow. Mr. Quad told me with his amp, with this amp, okay, he does not even need his subwoofer with his Quad 2905. You see this Q Acoustic Concept 500 behind me? For those of you who have not seen the video on it, what are the reasons for you to buy them? For soundstage, for the fact that they disappear, and they have good detail in the mids and bass region. You don't buy this Concept 500 for bass punch or power, but with the Cayenne CS150, man, they can punch. They sound like they can go deeper than what I'm used to without sacrificing nuances. I can feel this gentle force pushing at me. So with these speakers, I kept on listening to songs that has a lot of dynamics and bass, orchestra pieces, complex tracks, 80s music with a lot of beat, drum, and I love the gravitas it brings to the presentation. Also, the microdynamics is just as impressive. You see, in a complex track, there are what I call background instruments. You have the dominant one that takes center stage, that takes all your attention, and the rest are like companion. Now, what I notice, even the background instruments, the thing sounding ones, is also very dynamic. They have the same aggressivity, well, in a good way, bite, presence as the main instrument. That was impressive for me. But okay, it depends on the speaker you pair it with. Some speakers will do better, but overall the microdynamic is present with all the speakers I've tried. Now, because each instrument is as present, the instrument separation naturally is fantastic. It's not only the fact that you can localize them easily, 
is the fact that each instrument has the strong presence, like the same strong presence that makes the separation outstanding. Now this you don't find in all amps. Now back to bass, okay? Bass is deep, I mean basement deep, and a bit dry, and that is a good thing. I don't like it when the top end is dry, okay? The way I define dry is a very short reverberation time. But when bass is a bit dry, it is very tight and clean. Starts and stops instantaneously. The control of the bass is just wow. This, that is why I convinced Mr. Cantor, okay? Despite it like being 35, weighing 35 kilograms, he has to try it with the Sopra 2. I'm pretty sure it will control the bass really well. My only concern is if the top end would be a bit too lively with the Focal speaker, but uh, we'll know after he tries it. Now I can keep go going on and on about the other great things about this amp, such as the sound stage width, the depth and so forth, but I'll let you go audition it yourself in the stores. For Mr. Quad, he told me this is the best amp he has ever tried at his place. For him, this is more dynamic than his Macintosh MAC6700, and he would have bought one if he did not have his Macintosh. It's just too much trouble, right? For Mr. DIY, he crowned it as the second best tube amp he has ever tried at his place. The first one goes to this DIY tube amp that his friend built. For me, this is one of the most uh, explosive amp I've ever tried. I love, love trying all kind of test tracks with it. You know Michael Jackson, Billie Jeans? Now, I've listened to this song ever since I was a teenager and never have it crossed my mind to use it to test bass punch. Only when I heard it on my friend's like $300,000 system that I realized, man, this is a fantastic track to test bass punch. I never heard the Concept 500 has so much punch with Billie Jeans until the Cayenne CS150. Now, what I do wish though is that it would be perfect if the bass is just a bit fatter or bigger sounding like the Synthesis A40 because the bass is lean with the Q Acoustic Concert 500 to start off with. Now, I got used to the linear bass eventually and um, out, of curiosity, out of curiosity, I tried it with this Kabas uh, Santorin 25 subwoofer. Now, I have it here. It adds a bit more fat in the bass region. It sounded really good. The Kabas sub... I can hear it, but not in a bad way. This Kabas sub has a high level input, so I can use it with the Cayenne amp. Uh, other normal subs you cannot because the Cayenne does not have a subwoofer out. Now, before I wrap it up, oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm gonna end the video by introducing you to other Cayenne products instead, okay? I'm not gonna summarize the, 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 the amp. Now, I'm not getting paid a penny for making all these Cayenne video nor am I keeping any of this amp for free. It actually cost me money to make this video because sometimes I have to drop off the amp or pick up the amp from my friends, right? That's the gas money. Yet, I still took the time to make three videos on Cayenne products because I think this is a great alternative to many of the brand names out there and better value. Instead of making a detailed video on each Cayenne amp I have here at home, I'll just introduce you quickly to each one of them, okay? First, the Cayenne MT35 MK2. Now, you know, I was really happy with my Yamaha WXA50 on my desk until I tried this amp. The sound stage really opens up compared to my own Yamaha WXA50. Now, this amp has 35 watt, uses 4 EL34, and the best part, it has Bluetooth. Less than $2,000 Canadian. Next, the Cayenne CS88. It uses almost the same tube as the Washington R8, but it has a more balanced presentation. It uses 4K T88 and it will output 48 watts. Compared to the CS55, it sounds better and there's more presence in the bass. The only thing is that the power tubes that came with it were on the bright side. And I had to change it to these KT88 tubes I got from ChinaHiFiAudio.com and it is, it is much, much smoother after I changed it. Finally, the Cayenne CS100. It uses 8 KT88 or 8 EL34, outputs 80 watt. And for those of you who need power to drive their mana pans and can, but can't afford the CS150, this is a possible solution. It drove the mana pan LRS effortlessly. Now, Cayenne in Canada has a local distributor and a network of dealers, so you can go into the store to listen to these products and also not worry about warranty. 
Now in the States, sadly, the setup and accessibility is not as good as here in Canada. And uh, hopefully one day it will change and you can go listen to this Cayenne CS150 in the stores. Now I do recommend you addition before buy. Now with that said, I hope you enjoy me talking about gear that are not mainstream. I know my views suffer whenever I go in that direction, but for me it's more fun to introduce you to stuff that no one talks about. So uh, give a like if you agree and uh, I'll see you then. I'll see you next time. It's not